Oh yeah, what is good? Got a fresh crack. We're gonna take one more shot at the redraft stuff here before your drafts all get kicked off. I mean, let's be serious, everybody really drafts, you know, after this preseason's wrapped up, so do one more of those. We got a little mock draft that we did with the patrons, um, and we're gonna try to give you, you know, some tiers with, through, you know, the first six or seven rounds here of running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, as yeah, well as... say rankings? Sure. Tiers, rankings, whatever Ooh. you want to do. We'll kind of keep track of who we like, where, and what, and uh, so you can kind of maybe have some of that for your for your pleasure. Um, just a bipod tonight, no tripod, but uh, we'll have a tripod back soon enough, and then in season, we'll be moving into... Dynasty Talk and Redraft Talk, kind of a one-stop shop. Go ahead and subscribe. We'll, we're going to get some streaming on Sundays or Mondays during the season and then, uh, you know, another regular show at some point during the week. So uh, going to be a lot of fun stuff going on there. Try to help you out best Sounds we can. Sounds exhausting. <laughs> hey, the end season is just a grind. Just a race. I know. I feel like I've been looking forward to it and not looking forward to it. Yeah. So, like I said, got another. We never stopped here. If you're here for redraft, you know, <laughs> you should come back for dynasty. You know? Yeah. Well, we'll be, you know, right, we'll go right from in season right into college uh, breakdowns. So, and maybe we'll even go to the senior bowl and then we'll know everything. <laughs> so. If we go to the senior bowl, y'all will never hear the end of it. <laughs> Every day. Senior bowl? Uh, Who all was in the senior bowl? Shout out, am I right? Senior bowl, <laughs> senior bowl, senior bowl, senior bowl cubed. Mm hmm. All right, so we got a little mock here. Um, like I said, we're going to give you the mock. We're going to flash back and forth between a little spreadsheet and, and move guys around, keep track of the kind of the order we like the running back, kind of the order we like the wide receivers, as well as breaking down, like maybe, you know, depending on how your draft's going, what kind of build you're going with. Going to try to, you know, hit it all right through here. We, we did one of these with, with J. Mike. We've got some individual videos there, so you can go look at that. Uh, we're just going to hit it plug. again. So we had a new patron member come in, shout out to red and green or green and red. And he was like, so where's the mocks? And I was like, I guess let's do a mock. So yeah. we did a fucking mock yeah. and uh, now we're going to talk about it. So yeah, just a little more motivation to get over there to the patreon.com slash the FF. For sure. For sure. You could keep plugging away with the dynasty stuff, but it's like, we're kind of in that weird spot where, you know, unless you're doing rookie drafts right now, which we just hit you with the final rookie ranks. Uh, and those have changed already. So <laughs> yeah, uh, patreon.com. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're going to do a little redraft, have a little fun before the season starts. We'll probably do like one more show after this or so and just kind of have fun with that one. Maybe some just fun gambling talks projections and, projections and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but other than that, we'll catch you in season. So here we go. This thing led off with JT no one one Christian McCaffrey one two and Eckler one three all right I'm I'm I don't think I've seen any draft really go without JT and McCaffrey in some iteration of one two fine with that I'd probably go Christian McCaffrey one but I don't think you can go wrong if you're if you're getting either one of those two guys on your team for the most part you're you know you got if they're healthy you got a, a decent advantage uh going in let's um, pull up the tiers you got CMC over JT up there in the top yeah, left. Yeah, I mean, huh? it's, we're, they're, we're, we're tiered up. Uh, so, you know, it's just semantics of who you want in front. That's just, an order, though. It is. It is. We're going to order. Give you, we're going to give you an order, but it's it's in a tier, so it's it's adjustable. Um, Why CMC over JT? Just because you know what the, what the ridiculous ceiling of Christian McCaffrey is when he's out on the field and catching balls and healthy. I mean, we can, we can average, you know, 28, 24, 30 points a game. Um, so, you know, I'll take the risk in the one year scenario. Um, obviously this is dynasty. You're going JT, but, um, I will, I will absolutely take that risk and, and go with CMC most nine times out of 10 into JT, but you're not take JT and, and you feel good about it. Um, so really nothing crazy there. Um, I, so I would, had 470 points back in, was that, did I read that right? Or was it 407? That was so many points. Back in 19? 
four seventy. That wasn't a typo. Yeah, it was. It was insane. And then like he aver- when when he would be in on those last two seasons where he was spotty usage. I mean, he was still averaging you know twenty nine points a game, twenty four points a game. That's a hundred uh, more points than JT last year. Yeah, that's just that's Woo. the upside of of McCaffrey. So. Um, then I would, I, I think Dalvin Cook's the other guy I could possibly slide up in there. He'd probably be down in the next tier for me, um, but he's he's definitely the next guy I'm I'm most comfortable drafting, and then Eckler right after that. But you know, Dalvin Cook, we've just seen it. You know, I think we're I'm excited to see what this offense has to offer. We've seen Dalvin Cook in in uh, in 2020 be an average 20 point plus uh, be RB two, averaging 24 points a game. Um, uh, and then in 2020 and 2019, again, uh, averaging over 20 or right at 20, 20.9 20. points a game, RB6. So I think he returns right to form in there to be in the top anywhere six to, to number one. Um, and, and it can can get it done. Now, Eckler was very good last year. Um, so I'm not upset about having either one of those guys. I would just put Dalvin uh, first uh, through through after CMC and and JT. So um and then let's you know, do a little cross here since we're not going to try and just do straight running backs. Yeah. Straight so wide receivers. I, I would say Cooper Cup and Justin Jefferson then will be the other two guys that you're when you're starting off. I'm not going to be upset with getting any of those guys because I feel like they're giving you a nice advantage week in week out. That ceiling isn't quite Christian McCaffrey, but it's better than JT. No. And that and that, Alvin. Any of I don't think Alvin's ceiling, great years. I don't, I don't see I don't think you're seeing that ceiling again. Um, but, you know. That's ridiculous. It's, I think you're gonna. You know, so you're, you're taking get, Dalvin over all the wide receivers. Um, probably just because I want to get my running back on on the board there, but I I wouldn't say definitely. Most likely, I would. Um, Cooper Cup was at 25 and in 20 uh, 20, I think uh, 25 points a game. I think in 2020, Dalvin Cook averaged like 24.8 points a game. So it's really not that out of the question. And I think Cooper Cup comes down. Uh, from from the pedestal that he's on, but still going to be very very good. There's not, and obviously there's a chemistry there that can't be denied. But I don't think it'll be quite where it is with uh, you know Alan. Still Robinson having breakfast, bro. Coming into the fold here and, and looking pretty strong. Um, so, but no, I, if if you wanted to start your your team that way, that's fine. I'm I'm typically going to in the first couple of picks. I think you're good through like the first five six picks. I, I don't I don't think you can really screw that up too too much. But it'd be it'd be you know, like I said, CMC, JT, Dalvin, Cooper Cup, Jefferson, Eckler for me, probably. So then that's that's kind of a tear break there then. Uh, overall combined, yeah, I would say I would say so for the most part. And then I would pick up with all the rest of the running backs and Devontae Adams, Stefan Diggs, uh Jamar Chase, and then I would, you know, pick up with Najee and then um Derrick Henry, Mixon, Barkley. And you like this order here? Um, you like this Eckler? Oh. You almost have Eckler in a tier by himself because you you kind of cut it. Yeah, off I, at I could six. I could drop Tal. I could put Dalvin and Eckler kind of up in one tier by themselves, and and JT and CMC in in a tier by themselves, or I could just move Dalvin to the top of that tier there and just leave it as it is. So it's you know, I don't know that he's quite up there with those those two guys, but he certainly could be, and he's shown that he has the ability to be and. I'm going to be very curious to see what Zimmerless Vikings offense looks like. The offensive hater um, is out of there, <laughs> and you know now there's a offensive coach, which is you know the what the NFL is kind of doing. So then you got uh, you know Derrick Henry, who last year through uh, the eight games that he played, if if you're going on average, I think he was number one of. Uh, he was averaging 24.2 points a game. I mean, you know. And you're not worried about the screw foot for one not, year? Not in one year. I mean, we're, we're, we're playing redraft here. I mean, yeah. we're, you don't want to completely go off the rails, but I don't think you're going off the rails here. I mean, if he gets hurt, any of these guys could get hurt. I mean, yeah, he came back and he played and he looked fine and he's looked fine all through training camp. So, you know, I don't think there's really too much cause for concern for me personally, but, you know, if there's one thing for sure, they're going to ride the shit out of Derrick Henry until those wheels fall off. And do the wheels fall off this year? Maybe so. That's not really touching him in Dynasty necessarily. 
one of the only guys that's kind of off my board until a certain point. Um, but in redraft, you know, fire him up. Let me get him. I got no problem with that. Um, in this particular one, I took him uh, 110 overall here. Um, and just the build that I kind of built out here, he was kind of my, my, my workhorse steady guy. Uh, so throughout the rest of the first round, it's CMC, Eckler, Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson, Najee Harris, Dalvin Cook, just Jamar Chase, Dal, or uh, Dalvin Cook, um, Devontae Adams at 1-9, Derrick Henry at 1-10, Mixon at 1-11, and Aaron Jones at 1-12. I don't think I see too much variation in the first round in general. Uh, when you do these things, I mean, sometimes Joe Mixon's down into this turn. Sometimes Aaron Jones is down into the turn a little sometimes further. Diggs is up. Diggs could be in round. the first round. I love anywhere near the turn. If I can go running back and then get Diggs, that's probably one of my favorite starting combinations in the back there. What about what I did with two running backs, though? I, I love you. You just get two running backs. Right yes, there. I don't. I don't mind that at all. Um, I love that shit. Yeah, I, I I would say if I'm drafting, I, I'd like to go through the first three rounds. And if you want to go running back, running back, running back, I don't I don't really feel too terrible about that. Um, if you can if you can get a good third, um, like you know Zeke or uh, which you know I know nobody likes and is, could be on a lot of do not draft lifts. I think that's pretty silly. Um, all he did was play with a ridiculous brace on his leg all of last year and still be like rb6 you know he's not what he used to be though yeah, rb2 whatever they're gonna ride the <laughs> shit out of him and uh, now i wrote a world was like they could save 11 million or 17 million next year by cutting him and i'm like but there's so much dead there's so much dead money why would you do I that i don't give a shit about what next year is we're playing one year in redraft right now right true right um you took ETN there in, in the... In I didn't the, have a shot at Zeke. In the third, Zeke yeah. Zeke went before I, it got to me. So I don't I don't hate that. That's basically going to be your first flex. Yeah, I, took, um, I just was like, well, fuck. It, uh, running back's about to dry up. I had my shot at, at... I could take two of ETN, Montgomery, Akers, or Dobbins, you know? Do you think... you think Cortland Sutton has a better points per game or ETN has a better points per game? Hmm. You know, I don't know. That's kind of the that's kind of the way it hinges for me on that third pick of like, what running back is available that I could, like a, a guy like Zeke who I think can get a ton of volume and I, I don't mind I think Travis Etienne can do you know do the same so I, I'm I'm fine with that like if if for some reason Alvin Kamara would he's not falling to the third anymore let's forget that because it pretty much seems like it, it doesn't seem like he's getting suspended this year at least that all indications wild. point that to that seems wild but. You know, great for my fantasy team. Uh, so back back to ETN and Cortland. I mean, p- Cortland probably has a better overall year, you know. But I came back and got Thielen in, in the sixth, and the running backs just dry up. So I'm not even really thinking about if I have a shot at a good running back. They just dry up, and... and you know, I know, I know. Et is going to be just fine. I think there's going to be a, a nice floor there, and then there is obviously ceiling with the electricity. Yeah, I mean, you took four. I would probably back mm. off of four. Um, Why? Uh, and then I didn't have to. I didn't take another single one. Yeah, I mean that's cool. I mean, I I would just. I think I would just rather have one you can more. Start four. I'd much rather. I would rather have one more good receiver. I think. Um, I got know. Nuke coming in week you do, six. You do, you do have, seven. You do have Nuke. Coming. Huh? I reached um, a little bit there, but I'm like, fuck, I need it. Uh, that's know. like a wide receiver one potentially that oh, I get sure. in week seven. It'll probably be just fine by week eight. Right. Um, and then Kirk will get me through. Maybe. Juju high upside. I, would, I mean, Kirk I, was getting fucking peppered. So. I would I would just, I would, I, for me personally, I could, I'm fine with two um, through there. And if the third one's a guy like ETN, I, I, I'm near the end of that round. I don't have a problem taking that shot. Um so let's I, check these tiers out. So, you, uh, you know, David Montgomery, I, I, I love Montgomery. Um, probably if I'm in the fourth round looking for a running back, that'd be the guy that I'd that I want or, or take the shot on Dobbins, I guess. But I'm, I'm trying to not really be in that fourth round drafting a running back. I think I either want to take one in the first or two in the first two and then take a chunk of receivers and then double back on, you know, the Chase Edmonds of the world. If Josh Jacobs falls a little bit, I've got no problem taking him. And then, you know, 
pile up on some some other running backs a little later the J, the, the the cooks of the world the james cooks of the world yeah and I, so on and so forth because i got I feel so much better about et i mean where did uh jacobs i wouldn't have had a i guess i could have he would have been in the fifth round i wouldn't have had, had a shot at him. him no you wouldn't have to so i basically had to take my favorite you know guys right there being at the turn you know you're not gonna get to pick again for a while um but well, we're getting a little off track i didn't mean to just delve on my team there and, st- and stay there but let's keep well i mean it's, a, it's all relative of how you're building teams and going through this and it's, it, there's really one of the biggest things i always want to get across is there is you know you can absolutely win with that build right there somebody will tell you that it's stupid i'm i'm gonna say that i'd probably mix it up a little bit more but i've won every which way in fantasy i've won with one running back i've won with zero rbs i've won with robust rbs i've probably had the best with robust RBs, but I think it was just kind of the way the board falls to dictate the style of drafting for me. Well, that it was, at the 12 spot, the board falls where you can get four four guys. Uh, and, Sometimes. And it did in this one anyway. Like ETN, I feel like, you know, can go earlier than that, and then you would have been, you know, moving Montgomery up there, then you would have had to take Dobbins or Akers to be your fourth or Josh Jacobs. Sure. Which, and, and, and I could have pivoted to taking... Sutton, Sutton or uh, Sutton, Judy, Hollywood, there's Mike, some, Mike Dub, there's, there's Terry McLaurin. There. I mean, any of those guys I'd be pretty fine with. Um, let's take it back to the tiers here. Let's move back to the second round. All right, because uh, we got we got ahead of ourselves a little bit. So you guys, you basically have Najee Harris and uh, all these dudes in the same tier. So that that's mm-hmm. the order you like, because. Yeah, so I basically have all those guys there, and I don't I don't know if that's you know I, tomorrow that Henry that order over, could shift around a little bit. I could I, I could absolutely take Henry over Najee, um, w- without having because I feel the same like both of them are just going to get heavy usage. Right, um, but Najee will get the targets. Neither of them really have. Yeah, I mean, I mean, probably less of a stable behind Najee. I think if there's anyone that you can't really make the argument of caring about targets, it's Derrick Henry because all true. he does is just but he is like crush. old and a screw foot, and what, Najee's what, young whatever. and catches just, balls. He was he was. So I like that averaging the most points of any running back last year through. He was going to run for fucking two thousand yards. That's, I mean, whatever. No, no consideration of Barkley over Henry. Um, I think I I don't I don't think I could make a strong argument. I'm, if you took Barkley over Henry, I wouldn't tell you that you're an, a complete idiot. I think basically the way I see that next tier is that almost none of those guys, like near, we get down to the bottom of the tier, Swift and Aaron Jones, and they're they're making the bottom of that tier uh, because of you know the elite production that they can have both on the running game and in the passing game with you know the value of each touch of how electric they are on the field. But they're the only two guys that, you know, Swift could potentially see some split carries. And Aaron Jones is pushed down a little bit there because it does seem like A.J. Dillon is going to be, that's going to be a pretty close split. Um, you just called him 1A and 1A. Right. Well, I don't know. Yeah. And, that's what the coach said. Right. <laughs> Aaron Jones, obviously, you know, with the – you know, the targets that are now going to get dispersed among the offense and maybe not having a true wide receiver one, probably a little bit of a plus for Aaron Jones, but maybe maybe A.J. Dillon sees, you know, a little bit more of the goal line work. I think that was some of the case last year. Swift was fantastic in the passing game and, and just a very good offensive line in Detroit. Uh, but anyway, Najee Harris, no competition really. Henry, no competition really. Barkley, no competition really. Mixon, no competition really. And all, you know, there's not that many workhorses that you're, you know, not getting any competition from the guy behind them. So, like I said, Swift, Aaron Jones have a little bit, but um, I'm okay with having those guys up there because we know they're they're elite producers when they touch the ball. So all of these guys, I could almost throw over I'm, all of these guys. I can't really see because. Uh, let me. I can look at it over here. So Najee through Aaron Jones over over the Debo through Keenan Allen. Uh, Probably pretty close. Yeah, for me. Okay. Um, so this is the second tier of wide receivers. That's basically going to be like halfway want, through the first, and then I could go. Then I could go back. Then I'd probably, you know, I'm 
Debo signed up and ready to roll. I mean, I think Ayuk is is probably gonna. You know, it's unfortunate that we we bought into Debo last year and that you're having to pay this price. It's redraft and dynasty. I'm not paying it and redraft. I'll roll that dice because of how fun it was. If 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 Debo is gonna buy back in and be and get the usage that he had last year, then you know he's gonna be pretty pretty safe week in week out. I think Ayuk and and Trey Lance have a little thing going on, uh, but uh, Debo is gonna be just fine. Uh, so I'm I'm fine with with putting him there. I'd probably take CD Lamb next out of that list. Debo over CD though. I could say, I could put CD over Debo because there's a, there's some doubt with CD. It's almost yeah. like people want it to happen and they're kind of expecting it to happen, but they're like not going to be surprised if it doesn't. This happen. gonna be the first time that he comes in as the man. Um, but he got his shot with he, he Amari did, Cooper he, out. He wasn't necessarily the man then, and he's coming in. And he is the man. We're, we're, we're banking on the elite uh, playmaking ability and, and what, what we think can be. He's been decent through his first couple of years here. Um, last year we saw him with – and Dak was just kind of coming back and getting his bearings. They're even more – you know, they're going to start the season with no Gallup and, and really no real number two. Schultz is kind of the de facto number two at this point. We got Tolbert in there. Um, he saw 120 targets last year. I think he gets he could easily be up in the in the 150s this year. And that's if 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 CDC and 150 targets, um, 160 targets. I think I think he uh, ha- I got no problem uh, taking him next off the board, and then maybe Debo. Uh, but Debo seems like a little safer if if he's going to get the running back floor. Uh, so. Okay. go either way there um so then is it a, is it almost a tier break there is the rest of these guys in that same tier or would with Tyreek AJ Brown Keenan and Mike Evans um you feel I feel like I feel much better about Debo and CD than maybe the rest of them yeah I mean I I I, I would like to say AJ Brown and and Tyree I mean Keenan and Mike Evans have probably earned the right to be in there but I'm probably going to take a couple other running backs before them so you still Um, like that tier then you like all that being one tier yeah I mean you know it could mix so you probably can get one of the you're hoping to get maybe one of these top tiers of, of top two tiers of running backs get another one of these and like one of these guys yeah, I'm I, I'm fine with with that. Yeah, I'd like to you know if I like I said if I, I like I like to start the draft off if I could get a running back and digs, I'd really like that. Which for those of you listening on the podcast, I'm gonna try and do better of talking about who I'm talking about. But we we're showing a screen on the YouTube that has kind of the tears up right. But so if if I had if I had gotten if I get Dalvin Cook a little later and CD Lamb a little later, I'm cool with that too. I mean, it's just not as fun as. You know, I got Derrick Henry and Diggs in this one, and I, I you know, I like that. And I'll um, put a link to the mock draft that we're discussing in the in the link below. Alvin Kamara without a suspension gets pretty interesting. Yeah, he has to come up. The only reason he's down in this tier is because of that suspension, right? I got him leading off the next tier. I guess. Like he's got to come up to this tier. Like, I'm right? okay. I'm okay leaving him one 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 down. But yeah, he probably he probably should come up there. But I'm you know, like you said, I'm. I'm probably going to target some of those wide receivers, and then Alvin Kamara would probably mix in somewhere in with that second tier of wide receivers. The Debo through Keenan Allen. Right. Okay. Um, and then, you know, Javante. Seems like there's a little bit of risk there because there is going to be, a, you know, Melvin Gordon in, in the in the flow of things. But, I mean, the, the running game, that Hackett system is going to be predicated off the – Shanahan kind of deal here so it could be it should be plenty of opportunity and it seems like Melvin's saying they want Javante to be the guy and that's um, a pretty telltale sign there, although Melvin a little seems bit like of, a good team player he yeah, seems like he there's a little bit of you know says Javante, the right thing typically at the back of the second I'm cool with that because there is a little bit of eh, ifs ands and maybe but if it pans out it's going to be great value there uh, in the second round. So I'm cool with having him in there, but Alvin Kamara has definitely got to lead the charge on that. And then, you know, you don't love that the, that the quarterback and we're losing Makai Becton for the, for the Brees halls of the world being a rookie. Um, 
could I could see a sluggish start with sort of like you saw with Jonathan Taylor and Michael Carter mix it in a little bit and then yeah I mean you know, Michael Carter didn't didn't play this last preseason game with the rest of the starters but Brees did and then Brees didn't do anything it's all Brees is uh the little general consensus hype train is kind of starting to go down on Brees it doesn't take much right yeah now especially know. being a jet especially, especially, in, the, in, especially in the redraft community it's, sure but every year man it's like what what you know People were so worried about JT in that first year, and then by the end of the year, he was rolling. I think the same thing will be with Brees, and he was, you know, helped you win. Did I'll have be. like a seventy-five yard run in in uh, inner team pra- in, uh, inner team scrimmage. Right. I mean, we just don't. The the, the only bugaboo with Brees Hall is, is that it's the Jets, and that we're just we're not sure how that offense what? is going to operate. Is Flacco elite again? Flacco's elite again. He always been elite. He's just not. He's not elite. I remember some <laughs> random guy at a party I barely even knew. I just said fucking about, around. I said, Flacco's elite again because he like completed a pass. We were watching the game, and this random dude, I didn't even know he was listening to me. He's like, he's not. <laughs> Joe Flacco's not elite. I'm like, you must be a Pittsburgh he's Steelers clearly fan. not. <laughs> just got elite money. Yeah. He really fucked the whole game up. <laughs> he fucked the game up for quarterbacks the way Christian Kirsch just fucked the game up for wide receivers. <laughs> They're like, wait, Christian Kirsch got what? Well, all, man, all the quarterbacks were like, Joe Flacco got $20 million a year? I'm no. going to need like 40 Now the Browns, now everyone's mad at the Browns. But but then the Cardinals totally redeemed the league and didn't give Kyler Murray a, a Deshaun Watson contract. And now Lamar Jackson's like, wait a second. <laughs> Deshaun got this. Kyler got this. Uh, I think I want the Deshaun thing, although we're cutting negotiations off week one. We got to mix uh, Kelsey and Andrews we, yeah. in here I was in, the, just, in the second round. Where do these tight ends stick in? Uh, Kelsey's could be just absolutely crushed with targets. Non-tight end premium and redraft Non-tight generally. Non-tight end premium, but I mean, I'm okay with winning that matchup week in, week out and getting an Andrews or, or a Kelsey. Even Kelsey, in the preseason, it's pretty evident Kelsey they're going to use be, Kelsey you know, a fuck ton. Like. Somewhere around that, that turn area in the second, if, you know, 2-4, two, 2-2, two, 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 if he's falling anywhere around in there, I'm cool with that. And then Andrews a few picks later. So let's um, scroll up back up here. We got Kelsey and Andrews kind of in a tier super, by themselves. Super right? interested to see how this Ravens offense pans out. They're kind of, I think they're kind of telling you what they're trying to do. They're they're thirteen personnel. They're they didn't really bring in any wide receivers. Mm. They like Bateman. They have Duvernay, they Proche, got rid of wide receivers. Yeah, they they and then all they did was draft a bunch of tight ends and bring in tight ends and they traded for tight ends last year. So it's like, seems like. Right now, it might be Andrews, likely Bateman, and fucking Proche or Duvernay on the field. You know, most and likely. Snaps. That's what I said. Likely. Oh, you did say likely. Yeah, I said Andrews, likely. Oh. Uh, Bateman, and then pro- one of Proche, Duvernay, or um, Tylon. Tylon. But it seems like it's probably a two-man race, and and Duvernay, uh missed a little time there, so it could be Proche. I think um, Proche's missing some time too. Yeah, I think so. But so it's kind of interesting there to see how that's going to be deployed. I don't think you're, you're Mark Andrews is in any trouble uh, with even if likely does emerge a little bit. There's just gonna, they they need somebody they need somebody else. else to catch balls. So um, all those Marquise Brown targets vacated. Right. Kelsey and Andrews in their own tier. Kelsey over Andrews. Where do you slide them in with these other guys? So digs over both those tight ends. Uh, yeah, probably. And then, then I could be fine with Kelsey next. What about this this third tier of running backs? Najee Harris, Henry, Barkley, Mixon, Swift, Aaron Jones. All those guys over Kelsey and Andrews? Yeah. Okay. And then, but, but, but Kelsey and Andrews over the second tier of wide receivers. Kelsey and Andrews over Debo, CD. Uh yeah, I'm 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 fine with that. If you wanted to throw Debo and and C D in there and then and then take Andrews sandwich or, or Tyreek in those there, tight like, ends. I think that's a fair yeah, sandwich him somewhere in there is is probably good. I mean, I think a lot of people are probably gonna miss on Mark Andrews and say, No way I'm doing that, but you win the, the weekly battle at tight end and those guys are gonna score close to pretty strong receiver numbers with the volume that they're gonna see. Kelsey and Andrews over Alvin Kamara? Oh, that's a good question. Um, we're we're operating on zo- no suspension for Mo- Kamara. Is that what we're going to do now? It seems like it. Maybe, maybe I'll take Kelsey, Kamara, and then Andrews. Okay. 
Sounds like Kelsey needs to be in a tier by himself, and then Mark Andrews in a tier by himself. <laughs> no, because they're basically <laughs> saying, like, you know, the, I think these two are head and shoulders above the other guys. Obviously, everyone knows Kelsey's, yeah, you know, just sure. that dude. So Sure. Um, yeah. Especially redraft. Tyreek is, is one that is hard for me to draft in that thing because I, I like Waddle so much, but, man, I think I think that's just going to be a, a really hard offense to stop, and I think him and him and Waddle are going to eat, and you could say they're going to cannibalize each other and maybe keep him away from being that super-duper high-end guy, but I think they're both going to just be uh, pretty strong week in, week out because they're, you know, it's one of, one of the going to be one of the better yak offenses, and they're tailor-made to be... <laughs> great in a yak offense so <laughs> they should just be the miami and two is two is just you know they're gonna take their shots and and you know two has got one of the highest deep ball uh, accuracy percentages going and you know when he takes him he makes him apparently uh but <laughs> he's gonna be he's gonna be fucking drew Brees in that fucking short intermediate just bang 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 but bang. but but drew Brees before shoulder surgeries well i guess not I don't know. Did he have surgeries late in his career? Because I know he had the main one before he went to. Yeah. Uh, I don't even care which one it is. But yeah, I mean, he was taking deep shots. Like, yeah, were we well, talking about that on air? I don't know. He Ty- was, shots with Tyreek. Shots, 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 yeah. shots. They're going to take shots, right? No, they're going to take calculated shots. But that this offense is predicated on Yak. Yak, which right. he which, was on uh, Levitard. Like, McDaniels is, you know, uh, been with uh, Shanahan forever. They ha- he had complete control over a lot of what they were doing last year. He the, Debo gives him McDaniels a lot of. McDaniel's had complete control over what right, that offense was doing, right? And, and all free to. Shani free wasn't to, calling plays. Free to design anything that he wanted to. Debo gives him a lot of credit for integrating him into that and getting the best use out of him. Like he he's awesome. He's gonna that offense is gonna not be a problem. Like it's gonna be a problem, right? For everybody else, uh, I got nothing but faith in how that offense is gonna run. Uh, and I think I think Tua can facilitate it, no problem. Now, whether or not the owner is going to be happy with Tua enough to say, "Hey, we're keeping him they around," they don't have a fucking pick, right? Well, they, they, they still have one. They have another one. They, yeah. They Which one two. do they take? The one they own? I don't know. That's wild. Um, so that man shouldn't have his team anymore. Two. Well, that, good luck. Two of the two of the other guys that I, Lenny and and James Connor running back wise are are two guys that i struggle really taking i don't really know why um they're probably in line for bulk of the carries but like they're probably two of the running backs that i'm that i really are gun shy to take and i'll you know i usually why are you scared of lenny i don't know i don't uh, just because he's fat no not you hate him because he's fat no just just that <laughs> All, that offensive line all of, a se- all of a sudden seems like oh, just dropping just like dropping like flies. flies. It's getting a little weird over there. Tommy's seeming like what? what what's Tom? I read something that he was on vacation. No way. He's. I don't know what was. I, th- that part. I just. I just. It just. I don't know. I don't. I don't love. And the same thing with James Conner. It's like was scored a ton of touchdowns last year. Um, I, I'm okay. I'm okay fading James Conner, but the, but the. And I don't not mean not saying I'm fading him. I just I would well, probably take a couple at the end of the second here. Right. I'd you pro- know? I, you know, give me AJ Brown and, and Evans and Keenan. That's your second tier of wide receivers. You probably want all those guys. Yeah. Over James Conner and Lenny. You're right. For me personally, now other people are gonna say, fuck it. Obviously, every draft we see him going right around the, the turn here. So So let's 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 uh let's talk about this third tier. Or is this the second tier of running backs here? It's like the third-ish tier. Sorry, not second. It's the, well, you got CMC, JT, Dalvin Eckler. That's kind of like tier 1A and 1B. And then you got Najee Henry, Barkley, Mixon, Swift, Aaron Jones is the next tier. And then Alvin Kamara probably needs to slide up in there. And then you got Javante. And, and, and then let's talk about this order here. You like this order or is this just guys? This is uh, the tier guys, or we, can we move these orders? Nobody, nobody, nobody's really in order here. But I, I, I'm okay. Should I'm, Zeke be next after Javante? Um, great offense. Workload's for, coming. I like Zeke. I like Zeke personally. Um, but I, you know, the thing is, is you know, in rankings, you see, could. I, 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 I don't mind moving him up there. We'll see what. 
Pollard can do. And, and by, just by like we were talking about CD lamb, we've, we've heard a million times that Pollard is, is going to be more involved in different things and it never really necessarily happens. They do need to have both of those guys out on the field and Pollard should be involved doing other things. But I think Zeke is still going to, you know, get his fair share of a workload and still catch some dump downs from from Dak. So I, I, De- Zeke's going to be just fine. If you wanted to say to move him up there, I, I still kind of in, am very tantalized by Brees. So I don't necessarily want to bump him down for what could end up being by the end of the end of the season here, midway through the season. Uh, but I could I could move Zeke up a good bit. But knowing that you don't have to go and reach for Zeke. Um, so you don't want to put Zeke over Brees. I could leave Brees up there for now. Zeke over Chubb? Um, sure. <laughs> Gee, let me think. I'm um, sure. Nobody's going to like that, but nobody likes Chubb anyway. Nobody likes Chubb either. He doesn't catch any passes. And Deshaun's out for 11 games. Right. I get that maybe they'll lean on Chubb more, but less scoring opportunities. Right. Like, we've, come we've on. We've kind of had that debate right. whether, you know, it's probably I'm definitely bad, fine so. putting Zeke over Chubb and... and at this point, with me and redraft and the Jets, like I'm fine put taking Zeke over Brees. I just yep. feel like there's a safe floor with a RB five ceiling with Zeke. Yeah, and I don't know if Brees has that in him right now. He probably got to move Connor up from the bottom of that because he's he probably will be getting the lion's share of things, and he's a good player. Um, How far up? I don't know. I like I like fuck I love Jacobs. I think Jacobs is about to get fucking road hard and put away wet. <laughs> like a <laughs> Seattle slough. Yeah. So <laughs> um Yeah, this is a tough tier here. Yeah. This is a tough tier because uh, that's so why th- I, But I these think- are these are kind of like the last guys that I that I really that I really want. And that now, now we're going to take a pretty big break in between a lot of the rest of the guys here. So let's go back to this mock. So we've got, we've got, like I feel good about AK. A lot of the running backs that I want. Right. Not, not I feel good about AK and Javante and Zeke. Right. Those mm-hmm. would be like, I'll probably have that as a tier break. And if you want to throw Brees in there, I could be fine with putting him at the bottom of the ma- bottom of that tier. We go back to this mock and, you know, A.J. Brown, Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, Michael Pittman, T. Higgins, Waddle, D.J. Moore. They're all kind of mixed in with that tier. I think that I'd rather have those guys. You'd rather have? I think all- I'd rather have those wide receivers. You'd rather have which which wide receivers? I mean, these guys you have in your tier two, right? They're still like Browns, Keenan, Allen, Pittman, mm-hmm. Evans, T. Higgins. I think I'd rather have those after, you know, over like a, a Chubb, Lenny. I mean, I'd rather have pretty much most of those guys over most of that other tier is kind of what I was saying. Say, say Specifically say what, who you're talking about? Like the, the rest of that tier of wide receivers that t- tier of wide receivers you were just talking about Keenan Allen Mike yeah. Evans uh AJ Brown Tyreek those guys I'm probably taking all those guys over just about everyone in that tier except e- for except for maybe AK and I could see Javante right possibly Alvin Kamara being AK sorry so we're probably gonna miss out on Nick Chubb and Leonard Fournette. Well, so I, 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 you, I'm. What I'm going to miss out on is probably Connor and Lenny, and then I think basically what happens then in the third round is Zeke and Chubb end up in the middle of the third, and there's a chance I can get those guys again if I took some wide receivers in the second in that in that mid tier that I was just talking about because those guys that's kind of where they got end up falling. So that's kind of a build that I that I don't dislike, and that's part of the reason why you know I'm probably not messing with Lenny and them. Um, at that point, I probably would reach up and take AJ Brown or somebody else in that point. Um, so yeah, no, I, 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 I guess I'm saying that I agree with you, but I, th- I think you're still going to get Zeke and Chubb cause they're going to, they're going to be in general consensus of where this goes. They're going to be in the middle of that third round towards 
the back half of the third round. Maybe Chubb a little closer to the middle, Zeke a little closer to the back end, depending on who's in that draft. So those guys are still very obtainable for me and guys that I still like putting on the team. Um, so that's kind of, you know, if it went, if I went wide receiver, wide receiver, and Zeke was my first running back, I'm actually kind of fine with that. And if I went running back, wide receiver, and then Zeke was my second running back, definitely fine with that. Um, and then I would go wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, probably f- for a minute here, and then probably back to the backs when we're getting into the Chase Edmonds, A.J. Dillon, Ramondre Stevenson, Penny, Clyde Edwards, Miles Sanders. You know, that, that's that's kind of the build that I'm a little bit more down with. And Jacobs, we got in here, but we know Jacobs is going – like that's that's why rankings and tiers are a little funny without context because it's like well it's if you just looked at this and you're like oh Jacobs is well I personally really like Jacobs I think he's gonna be just fine uh, but you don't need to take him there um, because he's gonna be fourth round all day long probably fifth round sometimes yeah he went five 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 in this mock five five in that mock and four two in in the last mock that we did before that so decent variation there but um so Jacobs you know you don't have to take him but he's another one that like hey if I missed out on some running backs I feel like I could say I'd rather I'd rather have him than some of those other guys that that you can take some shots on Cam Akers doesn't seem that like that much fun to me in redraft although I would take a shot and then you know he's kind of like that fourth round running back that if you miss on the rest of the running backs you know Akers over Dobbins We've, we've we've had this argument before, and we, it was more dynasty. I flip flopped, and I'm back to Dobbins, man. I'm, yeah, I'm me too. Fully back in on Dobbins. Fuck it. Yolo. Edwards is going to miss four games. Dobbins is not. They feel good about Dobbins. Yeah, they so need, uh, that'd be that'd the, probably be my fourth running fourth round running back of choice. If it, and then Jacobs, and then seeing where Dobbins depending over on Monty? Where, where Montgomery goes. Well, we got to see where Montgomery goes. I, if Dobbins is healthy, yeah, Dobbins over Montgomery. Sure. Because it's just the situation that we're in. But he's not healthy. Neither God's helping Mont- him out. Montgomery might not be. Him and Jesus are working on that injury. Montgomery might not be healthy either. I don't know. He's yeah. missing some time. Missing and time. there's a lot of terrible. The, 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 the Monty haters are coming out of the woodworks right now. And, and The Bears are just going to be terrible. And Monty's probably going to be the, show, the sole shining light on that team once again. Um, yeah. No problem with Montgomery. Um, but yeah. So I'm going to be. After the Zeke and the and and I I like ETN a good bit through that third round as well. But you'd rather have Sutton. I didn't necessarily say I'd rather have Sutton. I'd say and if I needed maybe if I think that's a good question. Um, points per game wise, I, I I'm pretty high on what Travis ETN can do game in game out. Some but other you know people, he dropped the ball though in the preseason. I did. So he clearly just pumped the brakes on him being a pass catcher. Okay. Yeah. Just throw out yeah. the million catches that Trevor Lawrence threw him in college. Right. The man checking him down the ball is the same guy. Right. Right. Uh, who I think Trevor was like near the top of the league in checkdowns last year. So. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, he didn't have anybody to fucking throw it to. That offense looks so much different. And they haven't been lighting it up in the preseason, yeah. but they've been moving the ball. Well, and they've been moving Trevor and using his athleticism, which was a thing that I thought they were, would do more of last year, and they didn't. So it's good to see that. Yeah, because he does have that rushing upside. And it's like they got a first-round pick extra this year with Travis Etienne coming back, which you know, I hear you if you'd say he shouldn't take a running back in the first round, whatever. But he was the first-round pick last year. They didn't get to use that all. They got Kirk. They got Zay Jones. They bring in Evan Ingram. Agnew was hurt for a better part of that season last year, and he's a nice little weapon. And then all, and then you got Chenault, a little icing on the cake, which <laughs> they're trying to use him in like in the punt return yeah. game. He's still muffing shit, so, but like that offense is looking up. And then ETN, you saw, you see him get little slivers. Like he looks, he looks fine. He looks like he doesn't look like he's got a, a oh, loose no, prank anymore. Great. You know what I mean? You see the wicked torque. You see the slipperiness. And he's almost busted a couple of off, but he, he tripped up in one and had a nice like eleven yards slithery oh, no, scamper. I think, I think like, he looks really good. I got no. I'm not. I'm not necessarily hating that you took him there. I think. I think that's a good. I probably would have pumped the brakes on the fourth one there because I do think Travis Etienne's one of those guys that could average you know a good points per game because of catching and running and just being leaned on a little bit till j-rob's healthy and then we'll see how that <laughs> kind of plays out and i know some people are saying j-rob's healthy now i'm, I'm we'll pump the brakes I mean, on that a little bit so was acres last right. year in the playoffs 
but then we, we kind of get to these fringe third round wide receivers and it's Pittman, Higgins, Waddle, DJ Moore, Deontay Johnson, Terry McLaurin. And it's like, yeah, you know, most of my third round is, would probably be rather spent on, you know, the Waddles, the T's, the DJ Moore's, the Pittman's. Um, over like Nick just, Chubb. Just over some of those other running backs that we were mentioning. Nick Now Nick Chubb might be one of those guys and Zeke might be one of those guys and ETN might be one of those guys, but probably – some of those other running backs would be like, ah, I don't know. I'm probably gonna probably gonna take these. Those would, would, Mon, would Monty fit in that? I want to take him. No, not, no, not for me. Because of the Bears. Yeah. Fair. So I could, if I'd have subbed Su- Cortland Sutton for Monty, you'd like that? I'd like, yeah, I'd I'd like that. Just that one more wide receiver to potentially anchor you down. Now you could say. You could look at splits with Cortland Sutton and you could look at all these other things and it's like, I'm not judging anything on Cortland Sutton. He came back off an injury and has had just atrocious quarterback play. If he becomes the guy with, like, we, we know how good He gets good behind Cortland, defenses, Right, man. we know how good Cortland And he goes be. up and makes ridiculous contested right. catches and comes down with it in traffic and he just needs to stay healthy and Russell and him are going to... And, and it sounds like he's he's leaning on Cortland in practice when he needs a conversion, like, Seems like Cortland's vying to be that dude, his main man, which he can support multiple guys, should, and I'm fine we, taking Judy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think I think Cortland over Judy redraft, I'm fine with. Yeah, but, you know, Judy All over day. Sutton in Dynasty for sure. sure but got to, um, you know, either one one of those guys is going to emerge as probably being the favorite, and maybe they crush with both. But I would probably swap that out. He's but, cooking, man. He's Chef de Cuisine. Yeah. I don't think he um, owns the restaurant, so that's something different, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Head chef, maybe? No. Uh, chef de don't casa. Know. Gonna, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend to know. Uh, Shout out to Colt. What else we got? Well, so let, uh, should we talk about this tier of, of wide receivers? The, the, what do you got here? We got – so you got Terry over Sutton. I don't th- – these are not in an order. These tiers are not in an order here? No. Waddle, Pittman, Deontay, T. Higgins, DJ Moore, Terry. There's not a break there. These were these Sutton. were just when we were when I was just sorting through this a little bit. These were guys who were the fringe third rounders into the fourths. So they were they had fluctuated in some drafts that we had done to be mid to late thirds and sometimes into the fourths. How high would you take Sutton? Sutton over Terry? I think you probably got to do that, huh? Um, uh, I'm fine with that. Sure. DJ Moore, Sutton. Uh, I'll take DJ. Okay. But that's pretty close. T. Higgins or DJ Moore? Um, T's kind of coming back off something. A little shoulder, a little labrum. Uh, Joe Burrow lost 20 pounds. Don't love hearing that. I, yeah, I might, I might be a little more down on T and redraft. Sure. I so I could, that. I could push him down a little bit. I could, and we don't know exactly what we're going to get from the Panthers offense this year. DJ Moore has been good, but not great. I mean, give me Waddle and Pittman for sure. sure. Yeah. De- um, Deontay or DJ Moore? I mean, with the way, if, if all, I just need a decent quarterback and it's Deontay all day for me for just what could I would say the same thing about be. DJ Moore. Sure. You need a decent quarterback. Sure. And know that Baker's going to target him and how they're going to play it. Um, you know, I could almost say Sutton over both of those guys, but I, it's kind of a coin flip for me, so probably put them all all kind of together. Um, I really want to say Deontay because I love the guy um, and, and what he can do and what he looks like on the field and the, and the receptions that he can that soak in. And uh, I don't even know if we've even seen the ceiling because Ben couldn't facilitate the deep ball at all, and I think that's something that he can really help you out with. But, you know, I think Mitchell could be fine for him, and if, if Kenny looks keeps – Improving and making the steps forward and being able to run that offense, then uh, you know I'll, I'll take Deontay. So, I've kind of group those guys all. Is there all right in there? I'm not. Let's put it this way: I'm not upset to have any of those guys on my team, and and those would all be the the next targets for would me. Would TB in that tier, or is he out of that tier? I could put him. I could put him in that tier for sure. So this would all be the the tier, and you're fine with any of them. Yeah, and I'll leave Terry in there. Would you want to move Waddle and Pittman up above this tier by themselves? It's going to be really hard for for Waddle and Tyreek Hill to produce at 
at such a high level where we're, where we're taking him. So one of them will probably be off. But I do love Waddle still, both Dynasty and Redraft. Um, yeah, I mean, I could I could be okay with that. I, you know, Matt Ryan's always been good to his wife. Pittman over Waddle. One. Pittman looks like a like a G out there. Um, nah, I'm I'm gonna leave my guy up there. But you could take Pittman over Waddle. Fair. Okay. And then, then T break after T Higgins, and it comes down to DK, Judy, Hollywood. And I think Judy could easily be up in there. Um, be pretty difficult. I mean, no, it wouldn't. I mean, Russell, and if that offense is humming, they could, they could be facilitating. Chef cuisine, man. They could be facilitating two high-end wide receivers. Which one's it going to be? So you just got one drop down. You could flip-flop Cortland and Judy. Who knows? But we'll leave them there for now. You want to go Judy over DK, though? I'd probably take Judy over DK just because the quarterback situation is so much better as well as probably maybe even Hollywood. Hollywood over DK? Obviously, you love the raw materials of DK, but... (laughs) Average 19 points a game. Was good with Geno. Geno. Was good with Geno. Um, I don't know what to do with DK. I don't really know what to do with DK either. Uh, I'll take him. I'm buying the dip in Dynasty. It's a swing at that point right there and, and... and Where did he go in the spot? 412. 412 ahead of Judy Hollywood. But doubled up by the same guy who took him. True. Uh, so semantics. But this is this is then where again, like, I wanna be I wanna be hammering, like, I'm okay with one running back through three, two running backs through three, and sometimes three running backs through three, but I want to be getting a big share of all of these guys that we're talking about now um, and be just the next three or four rounds be going, you know, Waddle. Um, I took Pitts in there, which I'm fine with. Um, you know, Moonies, the Batemans, guys that are going to be that are, that I don't have to worry about targets. Allen Robinson's, Brandon Cooks, Michael Thomas, H- St. Brown, all those guys. I want to just be hammering uh, the wide receivers through this area here um, and then come back to the running backs. And I'm okay with just having one running back through here because then I'll come back in the back half of the draft and do the opposite of what you did and just hammer some other running backs. Uh, kind of through the back half. Now, I wouldn't mind putting Chase Edmonds and Ramondre and you know, a CEH or if Jacobs falls or even really, I know it's not sexy, but if Gibson keeps falling down sixth, seventh round for whatever, I'll, I'll put him on the team. Like, look. He did look electric catching Brian the ball Robinson the other night. came out and led the, led the team off the rip. And then when you actually look at the highlights of what fucking Gibson did, none of those other motherfuckers on that team can do that. Yeah. And that's just the difference. And it's just like, if you're just going to give him to me super cheap, I don't exactly know what's going to play out. We, we just talked a lot about Gibson, but it's like, if you're going to let him slip down into the sixth, seventh round, I'll, I'll pull the trigger, man. Where and, did and he go here? He went five, nine. And this wasn't, you know, this, this was probably not even quite the epitome of the, of the slide. No. Or the the peak of the slide, I should peak say. Peak of the hate. Yeah. But it was getting there. This isn't that old of a, of a mock. So, but that's really at the end of the day, that's that's kind of just kind of walking through this and walking through all those last couple of picks. That, that's really the theory that I'm going pretty hard with this year, depending on what that, you know, if I, like I said, if I could get, a running back to start with and then go wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, fine with that on how it falls. Or if I go three running backs, fine with that. It has to be the right one. Or if I go, uh, you know, if I had, if I could get Zeke, uh, Henry, Diggs, and Zeke, I'd be fine with that. And then just hammer wide receivers for there for a little while. And then, right. I, and then I also want to mix in in that recipe. You know, I threw in a Kyle Pitts here. Um, for this specific build and I want, I want to make sure that I don't get, that I get, you know, worst case scenario. The last guy that I probably want to get is, is Cole Komet in the ninth, 10th round or Zach Ertz. If he falls in the ninth or 10th round, Zach Ertz is about to get absolutely hammered with targets. I think came over to the Cardinals and immediately just started producing. seems like nobody gives a shit and nukes going to miss a bunch of time. I mean, that's just 
great value in in a in a uh, in a redraft league, and then Komet as well. Um, so you'd rather have wanna... Pitt, So you'd rather have Pitts over Waller and Kittle. Yeah, I, yeah. Just I mean, Waller went from being a ridiculous target hog. Do I still think it's going to be just fine with targets? But you know, obviously Devontae's there and Kittle. And Waller little, hasn't been healthy this offseason. Kittle, season. Kittle, a little less volume, whereas Pitts is basically the wide receiver one slash maybe wide receiver two. I think he was in for one play last week or this this last preseason game, fifty four yard catch. They're like, all right, we've seen enough. Yeah, get I'm out gonna, of here. You got a guy breaking breaking rookie records. I think it's only going to increase. Touchdowns are going to go up. Mariota's, uh, you know, been finding him in camp. Him and Drake. So I mean, I think I think Kyle Pitts, baby. Let me just ridiculous amount of targets and if you're going to give them to me late four early four i'll take that fuck it but you want to get one of these guys here uh, pitts waller kittle schultz hawkinson goddard Ertz, commit the very worst patty patty fryer move right for sure just easy to get commit yeah it's easy to it seems to be pretty easy to get Ertz, commit or pat fryer at yeah. the worst yeah um and you know like we got we saw, prioritize those guys. We saw Kenny Pickett out. hit hit Fryermuth there, and in, in that last game, Pickett and, was slinging it, baby. So we'll see what Kenny Pickett threw two touchdowns. One guy called back. He was like, you know what? I'll do it. Again. I'll do another one. I'll right. do two. Um, but yeah, man, that's that just came in for the two minute drill and fucking slayed it. Slayed it. He's about to be the. Is he? Is he gonna be the week one starter? I hope so. What's your bold prediction? Be, be Kenny of, Pickett's the week one starter. You want to go through anything else? No, no. I'm dead, man. This is a long half of a week here yeah well <laughs> i could do this all night but we wanted to throw another little video at you talk a little bit more through some redraft i hope some of this helped like i said I, I can i can hammer this strategy home with you one more time after we hammer some wide receivers in the mooney bateman category mm. elijah moore saint brown hollywood brown those kind of guys iux um then we're going to come back and we're going to probably try to hammer some some throw some Chase Edmonds, some AJ Dillons. We might have to miss on one of those receivers for that. Gabe Davis has looked pretty good, and in redraft, like, why the hell not? Let's go. Um, Where's Mooney? Oh, there he is, off to the side. He's on my team. Don't worry. <laughs> um, I'm looking at your tears. But yeah. I guess this isn't really in an order down this no. far. And I, you know, I really not not to. I don't love this team that I drafted here, but I do like kind of the general idea of what i did it's derrick henry leading the way and then Diggs, waddle pitts mooney bateman mooney bateman gonna get plenty of targets Diggs gonna get plenty of targets and i think waddle's gonna get plenty of targets kyle pitts gonna get plenty of targets and then came back and i did miss on aj Dillon, which was a bit of a bummer and i wouldn't have had bateman there um and i also um missed on chase edmonds uh which i could have taken wasn't sure if he would be back so been falling a little bit more in love with Chase Edmonds, especially redraft. He's probably going to slay. Um, and then, but for my team, I did grab Traylon Burks there because he seemed like he was slipping. And like every year, one or two of these rookies could be a huge difference maker. They might not be strong right away, but they end the season really strong. And we've seen it week after year after year. Um, and maybe Burks will be that guy. Maybe he won't. But if Give he's hanging Kirk. around in the seventh, eighth round. Um, Give me Christian Kirk, baby. Yeah, he's not a rookie, though. Yeah, ones. but I'm just saying in this instance where he took Burks, let me get Kirk. Well, I already had a bunch of guys like Kirk. I don't need another Kirk. What? You needed Kirk. I don't need – I got – all my guys are getting pretty much locked in targets. I don't have to worry about it. Burks is a shot for me to be like – Swing. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge swing right there to basically end my wide receivers um, where I don't necessarily need Christian Kirk in that in, in this particular build. You know, now. he's not playing in the third and fourth quarters. Christian Kirk. <laughs> Well, oh, Chris, preseason games. Christian Kirk is also was also highly questionable for a few years there. So um, you love Christian. I, Kirk. I've always you didn't like Christian. Exactly. Kirk. Exactly. So where, where are we at here? You're you got Christian Kirk. So if I would have maybe missed missed a Bateman and sw and got a got a Edmonds there or a Dylan possibly or a Kareem, uh, then maybe maybe I do say I want Christian Kirk, but. I came back with James Cook, who I think could be a big hit. Henderson, who could be a hit. Brian Robinson could be a hit. Marlon Mack could be a hit. The most are to swing to see what happens there. He's familiar with that offense late. And then basically Daryl Robbins, Daryl Williams is kind of a whichever one of those RBs I think is going to be the RB2 in Arizona is going to be a lot of my last round picks, whether it's Eno or Daryl. Um, I'd like instead Keontae. of drafting Connor. I'm going to probably take 
those guys and see if I can't get the, you know. I can't do second round Connor. That was the end of the second there? Yeah. Can't do that. I'm not really interested in it either. Um, so, you know, that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at right now with the redraft. Hope that helped you out. We appreciate you all. Um, Might have just been a big mess, but hey, did the best we could here. Taking a swing, you know. Uh, yeah. Having a good time. <laughs> well, we appreciate you guys. Uh, send me a screenshot of a five-star review, iTunes or Spotify, and we will hook you up with a, a bid in to win one of these sweet, dope, fresh teas. Uh, just, just send us a screenshot on Instagram, iTunes, or uh, Instagram, Facebook. Send us the email, theffdynasty at gmail.com. Hit me up on the Twitter DM, whatever, whatever your social needs of choices. And if you're watching on the podcast, definitely let me get a subscription. Hit that notification. Tell us in the comments what you liked, what you didn't like. Uh, you got anything else, buddy? No, we just uh, we're in this Patreon draft right now. Me and Big Co just traded into the 15th round and scooped up Rashad Penny to help out that RB core. Love that. Man, motherfucking Big Co. Huh? Over there working trades while I'm here working. I'm editing and y'all motherfuckers making well, we, trades. We had, we had the trade lined up before uh -huh. I came in here. This hasn't been as fun for me as it has for you <laughs> doing these fucking... Well, on Patreon, we're going to have a nice little breakdown well, it between... It better be fucking awesome Patreon help. breakdown. We're, we're, well, what we're going to get to is we're going to get to a point where we start doing startups and we just hop right on the mics and, and get the discussion. Right now, we're, we are we got too much time in between, so we're kind of recalling. It's maybe not quite as sharp as I want it to be, but eventually, we're just going to have like full transparency of... You know the startups and the leagues and moves we make and all that stuff. We just so what's happening? Don't we're in quite a, have the time. We're in a Patreon startup league, and with and for some reason Casey and Bitco have their own team, and me and Foreman have our own team, and so we're trying to work through the whole teammate thing. And I'm over here fucking editing shows, uh -huh. and these motherfuckers are making trades. Well, we're having a great time making trades. I'm like looking at the phone, trying to check up on the draft. They made another fucking trade. I'm just like Jesus Christ, man killing me. we made uh, we, we did we did one through seven and like you know everybody that i want so you just well like, that's why we don't play together and see i have a lot more flexibility in who i'll take and you don't so like i know a lot of the times that like when i get to a spot like we I, took jerry judy bo i'm did. flexible i'm well, bending over backwards I, <laughs> but for the most part <laughs> I, I can pigeonhole you a little more than you can pigeonhole me and, and kind of but not we haven't had too many of those situations throughout the draft but like, I think we did, me and Big Co sat down and did one through, round one through like seven. And I think through there we had like completed 12 trades or 10 trades. So that means basically if we completed that many trades, you probably get, I don't know, 10, 15% of the trades that you send out. So we've probably sent at that point over 100 trades. Can't get Big Co to do any work for the show, but he'll fucking <laughs> hammer 100 million trades over the course of a day. Well, if it's content, then it's good. Well, it better be fucking good content. I can't wait to hear probably it. Probably mediocre. But. Yeah. Bust. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not salty, if you can tell. Yeah. Boy mad. Yeah. Yep, yep. Let me go edit this fucking show for all y'all's pleasure. I think you got to pick up. You make up. another trade. I think you got to pick up. I know. We keep... Uh. Nico Collins, baby! Kyle Phillips, baby! Isaiah Likely, baby! Thanks for listening. Hopefully we gave you some nuggets throughout the offseason. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate you. Peace.